Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. I'm praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house. So check this out, man. We got some news from the Devin Haiti camp again. I've tried to tell y'all, man, this saga <laughs> is going to continue. You know what I'm saying? Never end these story. This is a song that never ends because it goes on and on, my friend. Hey. This is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on. Y'all know what that is. Is that Lamb Chop? Yeah. I don't know. It don't matter. But yeah, so Devin Haney, man, has just been announced that the WBC have now made Devin Haney the WBC super lightweight champion in recess and upgraded Alberto Puello from interim to full WBC world champion. And they have ordered Puello instead to fight Sandor Martin as his first defense with Gary Antoine Russell being the mandatory challenger for the winner. So a lot of people say, oh, man, champion in recess. So that means he vacated. Yeah. Wrong. That means he was stripped. Yeah. Wrong. You know what I'm saying? There's a slight difference for those of you that may not be aware, you know, or may not be hip. It's okay because boxing has a lot of terms, a lot of lingo that gets misconstrued often and, and confused, you know, and let's be honest. The sport of boxing is it exactly and precisely consistent, you know what I'm saying? So so the difference is um, the, when you vacate, that's when the champion themselves just lets the belt go. They say, hey, man, I'm going to relinquish the belt. It could be because they don't want to, they refuse to pay the sanction of fees or they don't want to fight their mandatory challenger. <clears throat> so they just say, hey, I'm going to go, go, or they just don't care about the belt. Or they have some type of disagreement. They're like, hey, man, I, I want to move on. You know what I'm saying? And they let the belt go. When you're stripped, that means that the sanction embodies whoever it is. They say, hey, man, you don't want to fight your mandatory. You're not doing what we say. You're not You're not uh, being cooperative. So, hey, you don't, you're not paying the sanction to fee, stuff like that. So we're going to take the belt from you. You have no choice. You know what I'm saying? One is giving up the belt. So it's like it's like quitting your job. And the other one is they're taking the belt. It's like being fired from your job. Now, the third option is a champion recess. This is where they determine that you are on some type of break sabbatical hiatus whatever it is due to a reason like medical you know what I'm saying maybe a medical reason something that's be usually beyond the fighter's control you know going through some type of crisis or or, or anything taking a break for the sport that's not really up to them that they could they could uh, impact directly so in this regard he's a champion to recess so obviously it's safe for us to assume it's still an assumption though we're, we're i'm assuming now but i think it's pretty safe to assume that you know they're showing him some great giving him a grace period bullshit bullshit all right, I get it, man. I get it. Man. I'm a little more optimistic than most. You know, I know some of you that continue reading the definition. See that it says it's basically just semantics for stripping <laughs> the, the the champion. You could look at it like that too. You know, that's more of a little uh, pessimistic way to look at it. You know, but I think in this situation, me personally, I think that they're giving them some grace because they allowed them the opportunity to come back and let them know, let them know what he wants to wants to do. But at the same time, they put them on notice, like, hey. You know, if you don't hurry up and make a decision, we're going to give you this grace. We're going to allow you to not defend against your mandatory immediately, which is Sandra Martin. But if you don't, then b please believe we're going to elevate it if we see fit. We're going to elevate the winner of Sandra Martin Alber Alberto Puello as, as a full champion as we see fit. So there's, there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it as, you know, the more sinister way. Be like, man, they just they just stripping him without really stripping him. Hey, yo, what the fuck? You know what I'm talking about, but they, but they essentially stripping them. So you could look at it like that too. Maybe uh, you could see it as an L for Haiti. But I, I feel like um, me personally, I'm gonna continue thinking the as positive I can for the young man. But <laughs> but yeah, I think that they're giving him a chance to uh, as a way out for now to not fight Santa Maria, get his thoughts, get his stuff together, and then bounce back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna continue with keep going. I just wanted to cover that for those that are thinking more negatively. You know, which which you're not wrong. You're not you're not necessarily wrong either. We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. But I think it's pretty safe to assume that, you know, they're showing them some great, giving them a grace period because, you know, even though the the the, the uh, fiasco and uh, surrounding the Haney Garcia controversy where Ryan Garcia came in with PDs and system, so he cheated. And, his, and as, as a result of that, his victory, his uh his decision, Haney's decision loss was expunged. So now he's back to be undefeated. And it was determined in no contest. You know, even though that part is settled, you know, you got to think from anybody has any type of compassion or humanity about it. Then you got to have some, uh, uh, feel, feel, have a little sympathy for the, for the young man. They know that he's probably going through some, going through some things. You got to fight some demons. And, and as well, you know, he went through a traumatic experience. I mean, you saw what happened. So you telling me he that fast? They not jumping me? Ain't nobody jumping me? 
<laughs> you saw what happened, you know. So he's going. He has some trauma associated with that. And just to get his 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 head his head back together, we're interested to in seeing him. Uh, uh, I know I'm interested to in seeing him bounce back. You know, we should all be. We love if we love boxing, we should all be interested in seeing him bounce back. You know, whether he'll be able to or not is, is yet to be seen. But we do need to um, give him some give him a grace period to get his thoughts together. You know, and, and, and kind of settle down. You know, and then give him the opportunity to bounce back effectively. So that's what I think that the, that the uh, that the WBC is doing and give him some grace. Like, hey man, you know, take a couple, take some time off. And Devin Haney already expressed that he wants to take some time off from boxing. I don't think he should take a year or two years. You know, um, I don't think he should take too long because then you you um um um. What you getting at with the book script? Spit that shit out, man. You, you you open the door for opportunity for you to, you know, get worse, you know, regress potentially, you know. And so I think you should get back in the ring. But also definitely, I don't think fighting your mandatory after what just transpired, um, a mandatory in Sandor Martin, who's definitely capable, fully capable of, of, of making an upset. He's a tough fighter. You know, he's definitely there to give all the A-sides any trouble, you know, and all the trouble. He's there to bring smoke. I mean, a lot of people had him beating Teofimo Lopez. I believe he dropped Teofimo Lopez. And, you know, he beat Mikey Garcia, who's a great fighter. Um, you know, so a lot of people had had, had him winning against Teofimo Lopez, even though he lost. And then, and then like I said, uh, uh, Mikey Garcia is a great fighter, in my opinion. He um, His last loss of his career was to Sandor Martin. So Sandor Martin's a very great and capable fighter. Uh, I'm not. I think stylistically, Devin Haney could beat him, but we're not sure that stylistically or or mentally or physically, you know, that he's in. He it's the same uh, Devin Haney that that we'll see. So I do think he should get another two to fight. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not advocating that he shouldn't fight his mandatory. I'm saying I don't think this is a bad option for him to take. And yeah, so another example of a champion to recess, which. This is and this is why the terms could get confusing, right? And I understand it from from a boxing fan because I get confused too. I got question myself sometimes, like, dang, is this really right? You know. So, but Terence Crawford, even though I just gave you and showed you that definition for champion to recess, Terence Crawford was called a champion to recess at one forty seven, and um, and that's how uh, uh, what's my boy's name? What's my boy? Not only Jerron Boots Ennis, but also um, uh, uh, shoot, what's his name, man? Oh my gosh, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> But it was, it was also, oh yeah, Mario Barrios, thank you. So not, not just Jarabu's Ennis, uh, but also Mario Barrios were elevated because, you know, Terrence Crawford is deemed a champion in recess. But Terrence Crawford isn't having an, an, an ex, a, existential crisis. You know, he's not going through anything. He's just voluntarily going up to move up to fight at 154. So he's still active. There's nothing stopping him from fighting at 147 besides his desire to fight at 154. So it does get a little questionable. You know, it's not, it's, he's not going through anything, but I, I I fully support him going to 154. I love it, man. Him versus Israel Madrimov is going to be dope. But I could, I'm could i just saying this is another reason why sometimes we get confused uh, and, and, and there's some confusion surrounded, surrounded with boxing because, you know, him being called champion recess, but then the definition says that, you know, when he's in that, when, the, when someone's inactive or or they're going through something that makes them unavailable. No, Terrence Crawford's still Available. You know, they just didn't take it from him. So, <laughs> but the IBF did though. The IBF snatched it from him quick and gave it to Boots Ennis. But yeah, I just want to let y'all know that man Devin Haiti is apparently going to be taking some time off from boxing as, as as we anticipated. Maybe to the lawsuit that he's filed against Ryan Garcia is over with. And um, yeah, Alberto Puello has been upgraded, and we shall see. According to WBC, Alberto Puello versus Sandor Martin, which I think is a good fight. I I I will lean towards Sandor Martin. Um, and then you know with Gary Antoine Russell getting the winner, which for Gary Antoine Russell, I would you know it's crazy. I will lean towards Sandor Martin to beat Puello, but I prefer for Puello to win because I want to see Gary Antoine Russell versus Puello again. You know for the rebound because that was a close fight. But yeah, I appreciate y'all rocking as always. Y'all be easy. Take care of yourselves. Remember, with God we can do anything. Without God we are nothing. The doctor's out. Oh, before that, I know y'all. A lot of y'all like, dang, how did Gary Antoine Russell become the mandatory? <laughs> Already, when he just lost to Puello, how's he going to be the mandatory for the winner between Puello and Sandor Martin? Hey, it is what it is, man. It's going to be a good fight. Gary Antoine Russell, his stock is not going to drop that low in the rankings. I mean, he only lost to the person who's a champion. That was his first loss, too. So, uh, uh, really, I think that's a good fight. And I think it kind of does make sense from a, from a competitive standpoint. Now, if you want to argue the rankings and the consistency, that's on you. But, yeah, I just want to end with that, man. Y'all be easy. Take care of yourself. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets. <laughs>